All right. Well, hello and welcome to how to create engaging content that keeps, uh, sorry, that leaves your audience wanting more. We'll start quickly just with some uh, housekeeping this morning and this afternoon for, for some of us. Chelsea, if you want to move to the next slide. So uh, two great ways to participate today, use the chat. So you can send your questions um, either via the Q&A or the chat. You can send to the host and the panelists um, or to everyone um, so we can all get involved. And then we will have a few polls to participate in um, throughout the discussion. So um, Chelsea, on the next slide, you know, I would say welcome to our fireside chat, um, but we still have one more week left of summer before I'll admit that falls here. So um, we're just gonna say welcome to the conversation. I hope you've brought your questions and are ready to learn from these pros. So please meet my good friends, uh, Jane and Helena. So uh, Jane has worked, uh, or she did work a corporate job for 30 years while she moonlighted as a voice actor, a copywriter, and a soft news reporter. And then in 2011, she decided to go all in, um, and she's now the founder of Reactive Voice, and she specializes in copywriting, speech writing, ghost writing, and blogging. Um, for a specific target markets. Um, you may know Jane, you may have attended some of the great online seminars she's done with our, with our good friend, Martin Brosman. Um, so welcome, Jane. Thank and you. we also have uh, uh, Helena Smolak with us today. Helena is the owner of Velocity Athletic Training, where she creates an environment where a trusted bond is developed between the client and the coach. She works with clients to design one-to-one -one functional conditioning programs to achieve optimal health, something probably we all, we all could benefit from. So uh, Jane and Helena, welcome. I'd love each of you just to say hello to our audience and why you're excited to be here today. Well, I'm excited to be here because content, of course, is so important, and you've got to make sure that your message is reaching out to your target market. We had somebody this morning on Alignable who was wondering how to sell baby shoes, and so I, I gave her some ideas. So you just got to figure it out. Great. Thanks, Jane. Helena? I am very thankful for, for this invitation to, to talk about marketing and health and wellness. Um, my purpose here today is to share uh, basically how I've managed to stay in the industry for 35 years and learn so much about the changes that have happened within our industry and how to make get that message across in a, in a very professional way to, to retain clients as well as uh, now the, the new way of, of um, network marketing and social socializing. Perfect. Well, we're excited to learn from both of you. And I'm Maureen Plumman. I'm the head of marketing here at Alignable. And I'm joined by my two colleagues, uh, Nikki Hoffman and Chelsea Taylor, who will be helping uh, field some of your, some of your questions uh, behind the scenes. So let's get started with a quick poll. I'd love to hear about um, who your customers are. So do you sell to other businesses? Do you sell to consumers? Uh, or both. So um, if you wouldn't mind just answering our quick poll that Chelsea's put up on the screen. And Chelsea, just let us know when when uh, we've got the results in. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you, um, your customers are both other businesses and consumers, and then really close tie between other businesses and consumers. So great, thank you for that information. Um, so let's you know jump into. I'll just set the stage a bit for today. So when you think about back pre-pandemic, um, having an online presence was still a key way to promote your business, to connect with your customers. But now, really, as we navigate this, seems like it's an ever-changing landscape of life after COVID. Now there's Delta. For many businesses, um, it's also evolved into creating digital and virtual connections that work alongside their physical world. Um, being able to reach more people, increase your credibility, manage your reputation, and those relationships in what we are in a digital first world um, are strategies that have helped many small businesses not only survive, but thrive. 
Um, and I think one thing that hasn't changed throughout all of all of kind of what's happening is that people like to do business with those they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. So Helena and Jane, you're both in businesses where gaining people's trust and building relationships is particularly important. Jane, why don't we start with you? Um, you know, how has this changed for you in this now digital first uh, world that we're in? I think the biggest change is that we've had to add these video calls to our arsenal of of ways to interact and to learn how to connect with people um, without you know, doing a big push to sell them something. And I think it's also how you present yourself as well. I mean, you can have your bunny slippers on, but you know, from the waist up, you still gotta look good because people will wonder otherwise if they should really trust you with their money and their time, you know, if they're gonna start doing business with you. So I think a lot of that is your presentation, just as it is on your website, just as it is in your social media, make sure that your presentation's still good and that you're interested in the people that you're looking at and that you're talking to. Great, good tips, good tips for sure, Jane. Helena, how about you? I completely agree with Jane. Um, the only difference is for me, because I am in an industry where uh, there are other issues that are involved with online. Uh, as, a, as a professional businesswoman, uh, being in the industry for 35, 35 years, um, you know, part of our certification process is that, you know, there's certain issues we have to follow, uh, policies. Um, and so now with the new way of networking online and offering services online, um, it sort of uh, puts us in, in a, a fine line of, you know, liability as well as, you know, losing that, that real one-to-one -one personal in-person touch. So that, that is um, just something on that sort of changed in, in a way, and I'm not sure how that would be regulated in the future. So that's, but with Jane, I, I totally agree with the way we are doing things now. It's so different and uh, um, we can still achieve that personal touch again with the way you present yourself and uh, your business, your website and, and networking online. Yeah. So our building, yeah, building those relationships is, is key. Yeah. Um, Jane, you went from having a corporate job to hanging your own shingle out full time. What are some tips you can give on how you grew your business and then how you've used Alignable um, to help you do that as well? Well, I think the big thing that I took from my corporate time was networking. But as a business owner, I now have translated that into relationship marketing because that's really what it's about. It's building that relationship. And I think networking makes us think, you know, hand somebody a business card and poof, you're in. Um, the relationship marketing is different. And I think Alignable is so key to that because you get to see who's in your neighborhood, you know, who's in your same industry and you get to work with them. It's kind of like having a virtual coffee shop where you can see your colleagues, your competitors, and your customers all at the same time and make a connection with them. And so I found that that is the most important thing you can do for your business is really build up that relationship marketing and Alignable is a phenomenal tool for being able to do that. Great, and we actually have some new tools coming very soon that will help you do that uh, to an even better degree. Um, so Helena, I know that you moved from Canada to the US and you basically had to put your business on hold because you were trying to get your work permit uh, through and then COVID happened. Um, and so you, like many of us, had to learn new technology, your overall marketing plan had to change. What are some tips on how you used Alignable to get up and running again, as well as how you use it today to get in front of more businesses? Um, well, the one thing I had to, actually, I was happy that I had that almost, what, a year and a half of, of wait time because while everybody was, uh, and it's sad to say that everybody's basically scrambling to switch over to this new way of doing business, I sat around going, okay, well, I can just, you know, start researching the U.S. market more because it is different than Canada in, in some ways. Um, so I decided to you know, I've got to have a good strategy here because my business plan has to change now to include technology. Mm -hmm. Not that it did not include technology, but it's a new way of technology where, you know, I, I, I need to sort of use this platform um, to 
build my presence, to build the company. So I decided, okay, which other platform can align with this? So right away, I thought of YouTube. Um, and what I've done is gather the people that, that uh, complement my industry. Uh, so many avenues, nutrition, supplementation, uh, business coaches, uh, life coaches. So I've brought, I started off with supplements. Uh, why? Because it complements now. Our, so I started to connect with people that are in supplementation. They run a business in that realm. And they all had a very unique story to, to share with, with uh, people in my network on the platform as well. So my strategy was, okay, with what's going on right now, um, and with my background in kinesiology and nutrition, I thought, let's start helping people become aware of how they can start taking control of their health and wellness during this time. Sort of eliminating some fear, uh, but at the same time, getting people to um, more motivated and teaching them how to step away from the computer if you've been on, you, you know, in front of your screen for more than two hours, which is starting to happen. I notice that I do that to myself and I become conscious and I go, okay, I got to step back. I got to get away from the screen. Um, but that's the strategy I used. Um, and I've had some wonderful guests on the show to share their journey from, you know, whatever happened in their, their to affect their health and wellness, yeah. they've come out of it because and we've taken the steps. And so with Alignable, I thought, you know what, let's start putting this on Alignable. Let's start creating um, some form of audience that will tap into uh, okay, I can do this. I can step away from the computer. I can try, uh, you know, not everything will work for everybody because everybody's different in terms of their health and wellness. So that's the strategy I used. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's doing quite well. Uh, hopefully in the new year, I'm going to round up all my guest speakers and we're going to offer a, um, uh, a like an expo, an online expo for our networks on Alignable. So great. And, and um, it seems like, so, so your strategy was basically to reach out to complementary businesses, how you could partner together. And then how did you actually get in front of, um, you know, some of those, some of those complementary businesses and, you know, were there ways that you, that you found where you could open up doors to connect with more businesses? Um, my, my strategy with connecting and networking with everybody is just reaching out I've got this butterfly personality, so I like to meet everybody. And it is a new way of meeting every, you know, new people. Uh, and then you have the issue of trust, you know, that comes up. Um, so I just go out and I, I connect with with people and and uh, pitch. Let's let's uh, Zoom meet or WebEx meet, or some people prefer not to do that. They prefer a phone call. So. We, you know, we connect, we talk, we, we share our journeys together. And um, at that point, we, we'll decide, okay, would you like to be on the show? Would you like to share your, your uh, journey with, with uh, my network and, and uh, raise the consciousness to how to take care of your health and wellness during this very trying time in the world? And it's working. It's, it's wonderful. I, I enjoy um, helping others and, and having people share their journey. It's very, very important during this time. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, Jane, what about, um, so once you, you have got yourself in front of more businesses, what are some key examples of, of how you can increase your, your credibility in front, of those, in front of those businesses or in front of your network? Well, one of the things that Helena mentioned was that everybody has a story to tell. And I think that that's very important that you take advantage of that in your profile and tell the story about how you started your business and why you started your business. And that will, again, open up the communication with your Alignable Network because it pops up and says, hey, you know, Jane just changed something on her, her site. So you should go see it on, on her Alignable profile, rather. And so you should see that. And it, it makes people keep you in the conversation. And it also gives them something to think about because they'll see you 
not just as a business owner or whatever, they'll see you as a real person. And again, we're going back to that relationship marketing. And that's why it's so important to understand who your client is, who your protect, uh, potential client or customer is, have them vividly in your head and then talk to them as if they were in front of you and talk to the things that will be beneficial for them. So that's why your story is such a great thing because when you tell people, this is my experience, this is my passion, this is why I do this, it really makes a stronger connection with them. And that's one of those great things about the content that you can create is you're making a very strong connection. Okay, that makes sense. Um, are there some key tenants, Jane, that you should think about, um, you know, as you're thinking about building your relationship with these people uh, and kind of building your credibility? Are there some key tenants for, I guess, you know, how do you be a good neighbor or, or how do you be a, a, a good um, a good member on Alignable to other members? Well, I think the first thing is that once you've got your profile properly set up, because I think that's one of those things that gives me a little bugaboo when I don't see a picture and somebody's put like one line in, you know, to describe themselves. It's like, no, talk to me. This is your opportunity to have a conversation, even if it's one-sided. Um, but I think the other great thing is getting those referrals, is looking at the people that you know in your network and honestly saying, I know Sam and she does this great. And send those out, let people know all the wonderful things they do, because that builds your credibility. That says, oh, wow, you're connected to her, you're connected to him, you know these people, I wonder who else you know. Maybe you're somebody that I'd really like to work with, that I'd like to talk to, that I'd like to learn from. So give value, give it as a, as a referral and give it as information too. Like I said, this morning, I was on Alignable and somebody had a question about how to promote her baby shoes. And my answer to her was, you need pictures. I sell words, but I told her she needed pictures and she needs pictures of those great little baby shoes with the babies in them and tell a little story. So here's Stella wearing her, her special sleepwalker shoes, you know, while she takes her afternoon nap, just something cute. Um, but be a value to the people that are in your community. Just like you said, you know, Maureen, just be a good neighbor. Think of it that way. This is your neighborhood. Be kind. Right. And what, what are your thoughts either, you know, Jane or, or Helena on, you know, giving first, right. So kind of um, oh. Oh, giving yes. back to the community first before you kind of expect, uh, you know, expect recommendations and, and expect help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You know, you, you want to support the other people in your network and, and your network is alignable. It's not just your little neighborhood. Um, so you've got this great opportunity to help your own little area. Like for me, it's New Bern, North Carolina, but I can also help other people on Alignable because somebody's going to have a question from some other group that I'm able to answer, or maybe I'm able to ask a question that gets people thinking and they come up with a great answer for me. So it's, it's wonderful, but be willing to share and be willing to contribute and right. things all come back to you. Sorry yes. to jump on you there, Helena. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, your, your information is very valuable. One of the things I have always done throughout my business is first community. I mean, that is number one with me. Uh, I can always, always, there's always a door that needs to be opened for someone else. Um, you know, for instance, this, this past year, we, uh, in collaboration with Blue Skies for Children, here in, in Blanche, they're in Bellingham. We actually uh, sponsored a single mother going through trauma with her children. You know, we put a Christmas hamper together and the community got together and helped out. Um, is this something we can do on Alignable? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, we can always find a way to, to work as a community on Alignable to help those uh, that are in, in need. So. That's a huge thing for me, and um, it works as a very, uh, it builds your business, actually. It, it really helps the community gain trust in you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it, it's one of my prerequisites throughout my career. Right. So. I mean, I, I just came into Alignable in January is when I started. And one of the things that struck me was just how much all of you support each other, even mm -hmm. from the point of just, you know, I think as you think about your developing content that you want to share, and I know we'll talk about that a little bit later, but just even liking and engaging with content that your other uh, people in your network have, have put out there just as a way to, as, as a way to support them. Um, 
as well is just something that I, that I think goes, goes a long way. Um, and then, you know, I know Helena that um, one of the features that you found useful was our, we have a new feature for premium members that is, um, it allows you to choose other communities, um, five other communities uh, where you can share, share your content and kind of build those relationships. And I know that that was something you mentioned that you found helpful um, as well. Absolutely. You know, it's, you have a starting point. I found what was happening with, with uh, the way my business was unfolding is that I started in, in Blaine. And as I, I grew my, my connection network, uh, the other communities came in as well. And it, it adds a status to the business. Uh, it's showing that you know, this is Velocity Athletic Training. This is Helena Smolock. Uh, this is what she does. Let's connect with her. Uh, let's work together. Uh, my main thing is to work together with, with other businesses and see how we can elevate each other. And that's why I started the Mindful Nutrition Supplement Series to grow that, to, to help other businesses, to elevate other businesses as well. It's not just velocity athletic training we become in line with each other so having the other communities come in it's it's a true benefit um you meet some, such wonderful people as well it's amazing okay Absolutely. great all right let's pivot a bit and talk about uh content specifically so chelsea i think we have another poll for our uh for our great audience here um and so the question is is posting content part of your strategy to stay top of mind with your network Let's see what let's see what everybody says. I'm going to admit that I'm a shoemaker on this. I really encourage my clients, but I am I am forgetting that I need shoes too. So <laughs> yes, we all do. We all do. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest about that. <laughs> great. All right. So 67%. That's fantastic. Um, great. And then still a good portion that um, they're not sure what to post. So we're going to talk about that today. So that's uh, glad you're here, Ben, to hear some of this. So um, for our next segment, let's talk a little bit about each of you, how you've used content to help increase your credibility and stay top of mind with, with uh, the businesses in your network. So I know that Helena, you mentioned you do a YouTube series and that's, that's kind of a, your form of content. Um, Jane, what about you? How is, how have you used it to help? I've really liked using the advice section, the question section on Alignable, mm -hmm. because you get to learn so much from other people, but also things that you're an expert in other people aren't. For instance, I can write a sentence pretty darn quick, but I'm not the person who's going to change the oil on my car because that's not my expertise. I could probably do it. It would be a horrible thing. Yeah. So, you know, I go to that advice section to see what other people are looking for and to see if I can help somebody else who might have, you know, might be struggling with something that I find kind of easy to do or, or just to give a different viewpoint on it and also to have them answer my questions as well and i've found that i've made some great connections just by doing that because i'm a basic member but i still have um, great connections from doing the advice section so that's my okay. suggestion good um we hear sometimes from people that you know creating content is is a little scary putting it out there i made some comment the other day that i remember long time ago when Facebook first started and someone told me about it, I was like, I don't know about, you know, putting <laughs> myself out there. Um, but it really doesn't have to be a heavy lift. I think content comes in many forms and you can find it anywhere, right? It could be tips. It could be asking a question. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the tips um, that we can give our audience to help them get started and feel comfortable with, with what to post? I'd say the first thing you've got to do is you have to know who you're talking to. You know, you've got to have that avatar in your mind of, who it is that you're addressing so that when you're doing uh, content that's directly associated with promoting your business that you are talking to your target market and actually any audience you need to know who your audience is to know how to correctly communicate with them so you know there's a different voice that you're going to use when you're answering a question on alignable 
um, than the voice that you might use when you're talking to your target market about something. You just have to know who it is that you're talking to. That's my first thing. Absolutely agree with you, Jane. Uh, you know, there is so much information out there. Uh, on my end, uh, especially with my industry, I have to research what, you know, the, the content that I put out there. Uh, that's why I connect with the individual prior to setting up a show with, with the, the individual. Um, I need to know, okay, what was your journey? How did you come out of it? Um, how was the product for you? And I also have to research the company because I am dealing with health and wellness. So the more concrete that information is, even if it needs to include statistics, and I have used in some context, uh, statistics on both sides of the border, because we need to ensure that what we share has some validation to it. It's very important. You get people that are com so confused now, especially with with uh, this switch that we're, we're experiencing, um, you know, and the information out there, how valid is it? How real is it? Is it uh, false information? Is it uh, something that I can utilize. So it's important to, like you said, um, know the person that you're you're speaking with, understand their journey, uh, understand where they've come from, and what remedies that they have uh, taken. I can. Maureen, one of. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'm sorry, Helena. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just thinking, Maureen. One of the things that you said was great about um, tips. You know, offering tips on how to do something more easily or you know how to connect better with people whatever it is if you're giving that insight that's a huge help to your audience it's a monstrous help to you know whoever is reading your content uh, on alignable especially it it might be a tip about you know why you have general liability or you don't have general liability insurance for your company whatever or it can be you know for me i'm a writer i could be telling you you know the value of the oxford comma which could be a really long argument but um <laughs> you know these are the types of things that you really want to share so that people will know like and trust you and and understand that you're not just a business you're a real person too and you're looking to serve them Yes, exactly. I totally agree. And I think we talked about this, Jane, before, but so my husband is a small business owner as well. He has an events business and, you know, he talks, his business is his life. And so that is, that is the conversations that, you know, we have and I see him have with others. And so how do you balance that with posting content, right? How do you make sure that what you're posting, you're not, um, just selling yourself, you're actually kind of providing that value that, that you mentioned. So people kind of see you for that and your expertise versus, um, I guess, you know, how, how do each of you separate that a bit in, in your content? I, I look at the, the number of years that I've been in the industry, um, my experience as well uh, with, with corporate entities and uh, cons consultation with, with uh, biz other businesses. Uh, that's valid um, in my eyes. Um, you know, I'm not just someone that's just starting up and saying, hey, I've got all this experience behind me. Uh, education as well is important. Uh, you need to have a much more deeper uh, knowledge with, with, especially with what I do. Uh, certification must be, you know, apparent as well. So this is my selling uh how I elevate my my business and and what I do uh, with with others. Okay, Jane, what about you? How do you balance the posting uh, kind of versus selling? Yeah, I think it's really important if you keep in mind any of those networking events that you went to, you know, in real life, um, and somebody would run up to you and shove their card in your face and say, "Hi, I'm so and so, who's he? What's it? And this is what I sell, and you need this." If you're doing that, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> Think of how you would want somebody to introduce themselves to you. You'd want them to say, hey, this is me and this is what I do. Tell me about you. So yeah. when you're writing content, make it something valuable. You want to give something. You want to tell them, you know, a funny story or a, a great client success story. Or, you know, if you're in one of the groups and you're like, I'm in a writer's group. So in that group with Alignable, we can change exchange stories about clients and how to work with them or 
you know, just putting things back together again. So just offer value other than speaking directly about what it is you do. Find also, other ways to be valuable. So, sorry, Jane. I also find that testimonials from other clients very valuable because it shows that it validates what, what you do. It, uh, you know, elevates as well. Uh, that's a very important uh, way of networking. Um, you know, I've had clients present when I'm at a networking uh, party or event. And right away, you know, I get, I highly recommend her. She's got so much energy, you know. So that's another way of, uh, uh, another selling feature, a networking uh, point, okay. for sure. Um, what about our, our group? So do either of you participate in alignable groups and then, and how do you, how do you either leverage the information there to, to kind of fuel your content strategy? Um, how do you increase your credibility in those groups with, with content? I think the, the groups are phenomenal because you get to connect with technically competitors. Um, I'm, I'm connected like I said, in the copywriters group. And so, you know, in in some worlds, we would all be competitors, but we're really acting like colleagues because we work to support each other and to do those things that we know instinctively in our business, we understand these challenges. And so it's somebody that speaks your language and, and really empathizes with you and the, the celebrations, the tribulations that you're having with your clients and customers. So one of the best things about groups is just paying attention and being part of the group and seeing when you can offer advice or going to the group and asking that question because you need the advice. And it, that's just a great way to, to keep yourself viable. And what will happen is that somebody is going to say, you know, I know Jane and she's over on the East Coast and I have a client who's in New York. And so she, you know, I can't work with her on this project, but Jane can. Look at that. How cool is that, that you get these great referrals because you've got this network of people who are there to support you. And of course, I'm doing the same thing. I have clients that I can't possibly service and I will refer them to other writers that I know, like and trust. Right. And I think there's also in the group, there's content that comes up that, that you can see is highly engaging, right? And, and that people yeah. are engaging with that you can get ideas from as well to pull from or to pull learnings. Maybe people weren't in that group that you could then kind of use that content. Absolutely. Um, what are some other types of content that seem to resonate with your network? I know, you know, Helena, we talked about your YouTube series. Jane, I know you did have a story about a oh, dog yeah. walker. Yes. So, you know, when COVID happened, uh, one of my clients is a dog walker. She had a very successful dog walking business. She had started it on her own and had now had six people who were working for her and COVID happens and boom, everything just shuts down. So she's like, what am I going to do? You know, how do I keep myself in front of these people? So we came up and decided that she would do a newsletter. And this newsletter went out to all of her clients and talked about different tips and different ways that they could manage through COVID and how to take care of their animals and what to do for their dogs that are getting restless and, and for these new puppies that they've gotten. And then she started this whole thing about reactive dogs. And she's now building another offshoot of her business where she's training the, the, the owners, rather, the owners and their pets how to behave together so that the reactive dog does not suddenly bolt after that squirrel or the bicycle that goes by or whatever. And so this is a great thing. It's really kept her in front of her clients and her audience in general, and it's gotten her new business and different business and has sustained her through this COVID and is accelerating her business now as we return back to normal, sort of normal. <laughs> Yep, that's a great idea. And I think someone just posted that they they post a Wednesday word um, mm. as well as another. Just, I think there's there's so many different interesting things um, that we could do. Uh, Helena, anything else from you as far as content that resonates uh, in addition to the YouTube series that you do? Um, I like to do, uh, you know, Move Your Body series, which I started back in 2013. And uh, but but I put it on a platform that was not visible, like not, I wasn't in front of the camera. Um, so I decided, okay, let's, let's start putting this in front of the camera. Uh, so that's what I, I find very, very helpful. Uh, it's a different way of 
and I, it's, they're short videos. They're, they're not long videos. Mm -hmm. Usually five minutes is max. So I show a, a certain move uh, and it's always outdoors uh, because people can learn, oh, well, if I'm just doing a basic walk, I can add in some, you know, band work, or if I'm in the park, I can, you know, use a bench to do sit-ups or, you know, little things like that. I find very complimentary as well as uh, motivation tips. Okay. You know, just to uh, quotes, use different quotes. I like, I like posting some of that as well. Okay. But I experimented um, with that, you know, like Monday motivation and I would have a quote. I, I thought, okay, let's see how people react to this, uh, how much feedback or likes and comments would I get from that. Right. So you, you kind of test out a few things here and there and yeah. kind of see what your response is. And then you can either do more of it or you know what to do less of. It, it's actually, you know, in some ways you're doing like market research on a lineable. Well, is someone gonna, you know, how many people are gonna react to this post or like this post or comment on this post? So if it doesn't work, then I just go, okay, it didn't work. So let's move on to something else. Uh, it's a great way to do your market research as well. Yeah, uh, agree. Agree. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's take some questions from the audience. So we did have a question about, um, uh, tips for uh, bringing professionalism to, to both video and, and content. Um, any tips, Helena or Jane, on how to make sure that your videos and your content is, is professional? Yeah, well, I think, um, oh, I'm sorry, Helena. Uh, I think that it's really important if you're doing video and you're doing a presentation with it, know how to use the platform. That's just... I know that's a really simple thing, but that's the first thing is learn the platform, take the time, you know, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes so that you know the platform is so that you can move through it more easily. And also make sure that you look good. You know, bunny slippers are okay because they're off camera, but everything else needs to look good. Um, the background needs to look good because you don't want people distracted by what's behind you. And then of course, anything that you're putting up on the screen needs to look great too. You don't want to have too much information on there. Um, keep it really simple, just so that it's a visual reminder for your viewers of what it is that you're talking about and, and, and keep it simple. And then of course, I think somebody had mentioned about audio content as well. Uh, do it professionally, as professionally as you can. Use a quiet, quiet room and you know, a good mic and make sure that you don't have the dog barking behind you or you know, the cat walking across your keyboard all those cute little things that you just have to pay attention to. Yeah, for sure. Um, what about cross posting? So, you know, I guess, how do you leverage content across different platforms? I've, I've uh, found since I discovered Alignable, I've actually scaled back on the other platforms. Like I do still use Twitter. Um, I still use obviously my YouTube. Uh, Google business, but I found that it, it became actually overwhelming, uh, believe it or not, to, to keep posting and sharing on the other platforms. And I came to the conclusion that the other platforms that I've left didn't work for me, didn't work for my company. So I put a lot more energy, a lot more attention on Alignable now. Uh, it has been so beneficial for my business i i can't like i i can't even explain it <laughs> how beneficial alignable is to be on this platform it, it's done wonders for me uh you guys love great. to hear that absolutely yep. great i mean the the referrals the 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 fact that i can connect and network with such great i have met such wonderful people on this platform and I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm truly blessed with it. Yes. I mean, that's a tribute to all of you. I mean, that, that is the community, right. That, that is here that, that you all create. So. And, and uh, it's beautiful too, that it's geared towards small business. Uh, let's face reality. You know, we, the economy has changed. You've got corporations taking, I think taking over <laughs> and us small ones you're just going, Hey, what about us? Right. So this platform, um, and I've said it, I mentioned it in one of my comments to Chuck and, and your staff, you know, thank you for having this because 
it has made a huge difference uh, for a good number of people. Awesome. That's, that, that's, that's our mission. So that's wonderful. Um, so someone also had a question on um, how to get new business for um, a company that is a messenger and trucking service. So I think, you know, what are just some, we talked a little bit about some tips on partnering with relevant businesses, um, you know, expanding your network. Um, any other tips, Jane, um, yeah. that someone should think about as far as, you know, getting in front of other businesses? I think it's absolutely vital that you first understand who your target market is. You know, I've, I'm, I keep saying this, but I find this is a challenge for a lot of my clients is that they don't know who they're speaking to. And so you can't get the right message out to them. And uh, with the cross posting thing, that's, you can reuse your, your content in lots of different places, but you need to adjust it for that audience so that it's proper. And if you can't cover 16 social media sites, just don't, you know, stick with one or two that you can handle and, and just go that way. But I do think the first most important thing is in your business plan, who is it that you want to serve? Who's your blue sky customer? What do they look like? Where do they eat? What do they make? What do they drive? You know, where do they shop? All of that stuff you need to know so that you can direct your message most directly. I completely agree with you, Jane. When I was writing my business plan, trust me, my business coach was nitpicking at my brain and I had to, you know, look at it and uh, basically say, my client is anybody that wants to embark on health and wellness with a twist of athleticism in there. Yes, I can train athletes as well. I'm qualified to, but it's for anybody, right? So the you need to zero in on exactly, like you said, who your market is, who they are, how they think, what they feel. Uh, you know, it, you need to be, you need to have a grasp on that because if you don't, then you will feel scattered. You'll be so confused and as well, follow your plan. The business plan is a vital tool to your business. It is your business. And if you don't set that in stone from the very beginning, you know, it, you might as well have a consultant on board because you can't look scattered. Um, and, and your posting as well, this is very important. It needs to be consistent in terms of, are you posting the same information on Alignable that you're going to post on Twitter? Uh, because people will follow that. You know, if you post the, uh, the sky is blue on Alignable and then turn around and go on Twitter and say the sky is pink, well, that's inconsistent. You know, you, may, you need to make sure that the information that you are going to share out there into the world with your network and, and on these social media platforms, that it's, it's all the same. There's no discrepancy anywhere because that can also lead to someone thinking, oh, they're not organized. Yeah, so good that's, yeah, that's one of the things is really yeah. important. Yes. Consistent uh, message and consistent posting. So if, if you're doing absolutely. it, you know, once a week, that's great. If you can do it twice a week, that's great, but make sure that you can do it and that you you're able to keep up with it once you've started something. Yeah. Exactly. So this and, is a great and, question. Oh, go ahead, Jane. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Helena. You don't want to as well um, post one week and then not post the following two other weeks, because then that shows, well, they're in and out, you know? Right, so be, con be <laughs> consistent and, and, right. And, and I think um, other tips too, is just, you know, people let people know what to expect, right? So Tuesdays, you post a certain type of content, exactly. protect, potentially Wednesday, makes it easier exactly. for you to keep on top of it. And also gives your audience kind of the, that idea of like, again, they know what to expect. Um, one of the comments you'll love, Jane, is someone asked if you ever use others to write your content. So Jane, I oh. think Jane loves that question. <laughs> ah, thank you for asking that. But no, um, I don't have others write my content, but I do have others read my content before I post it. Because right. sometimes yep. I will, you know, there'll be something wrong somewhere. Uh, and if I'm, especially if I'm in a rant, if it's something that I'm very passionate about, I'll say, you know, should I post this? Is this okay? Or is this just a crazy woman talking? And, you know, there's times where they've talked me down or I'll change it so that there's more humor in it or whatever, but no, I write my own stuff, but thanks for asking. Right. Um, <laughs> another, sorry, 
another point, and this is very important, make sure you're, you know, with, with Jane, you're a writer, so you're pretty well aware of this, um, how, how it comes across, like right. it, there's no underlying anger or do you know what I mean by that <laughs> again it's your audience who are you talking you to go, it's okay to be angry know, if you're okay. talking to somebody who will appreciate you, your anger but you know okay. also know that other people might not but it's okay if yeah. that's who you're trying to reach right but uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's not um there's no underlying innuendos you right. know, because I'm in fitness columns, so, you know, I've worked with editors all the time, so they point things out, well, Helena, you know, this sounds a bit, so you go, oh, right, okay, so you need to be conscious of the wording that you're using as yeah, well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, tone, tone as well, I think sometimes, right, yeah, especially with, with, with the written word. Um, another question we got was, um, someone's business is 90% virtual, um, should they still focus locally? Um, they work with entrepreneurs to help them leverage their business. Um, what are your thoughts on that kind of the, um, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. There's lots of local people who could use your help. I'm yes. sure wherever you're located, um, I'm in a small community. I'm in a very small community and I have about half my clients are here and half my clients are across the country in all sorts of different places. But I, I think that yes, you absolutely have the opportunity to help people that are nearby. Yes, you need to be in the community. Uh, you know, don't limit yourself just virtually. Be out there as well in your community. Get involved with the community. That's very important for the business. Yeah. Um, we also just had another question on um, someone that teaches podcasting. Um, looking for ideas on how to show up um, without being salesy. So we talked about a few of these earlier, but any other ideas on how to um, kind of show up and increase your visibility without being, without being too salesy? Okay, well, if you've ever gone on a date, <laughs> think of it like a date because you don't want to tell your whole life story and everything and that first, you know, 15 minutes or cup of coffee or whatever. You want to find out about them too. So you want to have a conversation. Oh, that's such a strange word these days. But yes, we're actually looking to have a conversation, an interaction between you. And that's where you don't sound salesy because, you know, they'll find out what you do. You'll find out what they do and you'll say, oh, you know what? A friend of mine could use your services. You know, a friend of mine needs to really get their business in order. Let me have your card or give me your contact information or, oh, great. It's in chat. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to send this person to you. That's how you build your credibility by paying attention and listening to them and then offering whatever it is that you can. And then they're going to ask you too, well, who are you looking for? And you've got to be able to answer that question. I'm looking for people who, who want to communicate better. Oh, okay. I know somebody who needs that. I have an accountant who's having problems with her, her messaging. Let me have her talk to you. Great. That's how you do it. I totally agree with you. It, it is, it's a conversation and it's, you know, someone told me a long time ago, like, especially like when you're posting on a social network, you're not just shouting at people like you're the whole purpose of it is a conversation. It's not a message board. It's a, it's a, right. Hey Jane, you know, or, or whoever. Indeed. That's why asking questions and get exactly. exactly totally agree. I could talk about that all day with you guys. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that another time. Okay. <laughs> well, real, it, you need to focus on real. This is why I set up my YouTube channel, real stories. Uh, I don't know if you ladies have watched any of my move your body series. Uh, you know, I'm an elderly woman as well. I'm not 16 anymore. So I, I've got that issue with me, right? So You're vintage, not when elderly. I look out there, when I look out there, you have all these young girls with these, you know, and I, and I thought, no, this is going to be real. It's going to be real, real people, real stories, because that's what people want. They, they don't want all the, the fluff and uh, lose 20 pounds in, in two weeks. It's not real. It's not healthy. So the focus is should always be on being real as well. If, if you don't want to sound salesy, create a contest where you draw people in and they say, okay, I'm going to go listen to so-and-so because this contest is happening. You know, offer something with 
from your business that will draw a, an audience that will create listeners. So, you know, that's what I've done with YouTube. It's uh, every so often I, I put it out there. Okay, let's go for 6K this, this uh, next two months. I'm going to offer this. Join in, like, share. I've turned off comments because, you know, I want to keep the channel. I want to keep everything positive. We're in a very negative uh, way of thinking right now. Um, and I don't like to bring that to light, but that is out there. So I like, I don't want to hear or read blah, 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 <laughs> the negative comments. Uh, that's not what I want to have people think when they come to the channel well so and so said and no drama you know keep your your it's a whole new way of thinking and doing things online now so you got to really be clear about how you're going to do this in a positive way if it means cutting off the comments shut down the comments right uh keep the channel your your platform as positive as possible we need to stay in that that mode of thinking now because we're doing so many things differently yeah agreed yeah. um all right we'll take a couple more questions so what about um time that you allot towards marketing is there a percentage of your time um you know we talked a little bit about doing consistent posts or consistent topics per day to kind of create efficiencies um, Jane, how much, you know, of your time do you spend, um, you know, maybe preparing that content strategy and other marketing, uh, marketing activities for your business? Here's what I tell my clients. It's really important that if you're going to do social media properly, that you build yourself a content calendar. And even for my dog walker client, she has a content calendar for her newsletter so that when she thinks of something that she wants to write about for the newsletter, it goes right onto her content calendar so that she can keep track of it. So we all get these little bursts of, you know, excitement in our brains and say, oh, that's a really good thing that I should be talking about to people. Write them down somewhere where you're going to find them. Or, you know, you could go new school and, and use your phone and record it. But just make sure that you have a resource that you can see those ideas because they will escape you. And they're really marvelous for using as tools to build your relationship with your clients. So get that content calendar, get that content yes. list going and, and use it to keep yourself in front of people. Absolutely. There are also platforms now where you can schedule all your social media posts uh, and you can pre-schedule everything for the next two or three weeks. Um, that's helpful. One thing that um, that was very, very important during my business plan, you know, organizing it, uh, my business coach said, start right now with using post-its. Have a board and set your time. 8 a.m., I go for my run. Uh, you know, set up your day-to-day -day schedule include everything that you need to do for your business in that schedule, including lunch time, break time. You need to have a strategy. If you falter from that strategy, it will reflect on how people perceive your business. Um, I, run, I have always ran a tight ship, even managing fitness facilities managing corporate uh, uh, wellness facilities, the ship has to be tight. And I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, it in, I mean it in a way that when you are timing everything, it, it's, it flows, everything flows. Yes. Your business, uh, yeah. Everything agreed. I, I need you to come over here and, and, and manage and manage me. I think, <laughs> I think Alina. Um, so, so speaking you know? of time, we have about five minutes left. Um, yeah. Time just to, to kind of sum up, um, and this time went so fast. I, it's probably my favorite meeting of the day and it always, it always goes fast. When we're all together, but, um, you know, what I heard from what we talked about was the importance of knowing your audience, mm -hmm. being a good neighbor. So investing in building those relationships, liking and commenting on others, uh, posts, writing recommendations for others, and yeah. then knowing that that will come back to you. 
um, finding and leveraging ways to, to get your message in front of more businesses, more communities. Um, when it comes to content, don't be afraid. Um, it's, it be fearless. Looks, looks scary, but it isn't, right? <laughs> um, it takes many forms. It could be a question. It could be a tip. Um, you know, Jane, what is your, you know, your, I guess, the, your most coveted secret tip uh, if you were to sum up everything, what would be like the two things you would say to people? This is these are the two things I want you to walk away from this with today. Uh, my number one thing: Who are you talking to? You would speak differently to a four-year-old than you would to a forty-year-old. Who are you talking to? Get that in your head, and then be conversational with them. Use language that they understand, and and offer something. You know, as in offer part of yourself, offer that tip, offer an insight, offer some guidance, be willing to share your expertise. Okay, perfect. And Helena, uh, one or two tips from you before we wrap up. Always keep your door open. Uh, listen to the other party, you know, ask questions, uh, learn as much as you can about the other business. You may not connect, you may not be able to help each other right at that moment, but I've always learned, uh, and it has happened through experience where I needed to send a referral to that person and vice versa. So, you know, the other day I read something and it kind of, you know, made me uh, feel kind of not sad, but just disheartened to know that uh, someone would think that you're not important. It doesn't matter. It does matter. No matter who you meet, um, you will learn something from them. And at some point down the road, you may need them. So spend the time, learn about their business, teach them about who you are and what you do, and build a sense of community, a sense of, hey, someday we will be able to help each other, whether it's, you know, during Christmas time where we do our uh, yearly hamper drive you know we all need to help each other in some way or another yeah so i love the, that yeah take that's the great advice helena we're all in this together exactly <laughs> thank you and so chelsea if you just go to the next slide just a couple i wanted to leave you with it with a few resources so growyourbusiness.alignable.com is our solution marketplace where we have tons of tips and guides um we actually also have a lot of information on jobs and hiring. You can post a job, that's content. You can post that right on Alignable. Um, I recommend two groups here that um, I think Chelsea or Nikki will put in the chat, our content marketing group, as well as the Alignable success tips. Uh, a lot of you are very active in those groups. I looked at them this morning. They've got some great tips there. Um, and then finally on the next slide, I just wanna wish you all um, a very, very happy National Small Business Week. Hey, I'm so hey. thankful for all of you and for what you do for our communities and for uh, all of us. And thank you so much to Jane and, and Helena, both of you. Great, great chatting with you. I hope we can chat again soon. Um, and for all of you, thank you for taking some time with us today. And we hope to see you during another session really soon. So take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.